since the very, very beginning, we have been on a mission to prove to the world that in our music, we kind of live the life that we feel everybody should embrace. And I think that you have to have a focus. And our focus has always been, look, if you want to do something and you believe it, you will find a way. Just dedicate yourself to it. And don't expect somebody's going to knock on a door and say, hey, uh, would you like to be a movie star? Or would you like to be an indie race car driver? Would you like to be a, a nuclear physicist? Whatever your dream is, it's there for you. You can have it. You just have to do the things which require commitment to make that happen. And I think that comes out in the music, or at least we try to let people know that no matter who you are, no matter what you are, you have a right to be whatever you want to be if you're willing to give as much as you wish to receive. And I think the the one saying that I heard one time that stuck with me is output equals input. And that means you're going to get out of anything, any work you do, any any endeavor, exactly what you put into it. If you want to be a great golfer, then you better be out there golfing from morning until night, and you will be a great golfer. If you want to be a great golfer and you say, hey, I I practiced 10 minutes last week, I practiced uh, an hour last month, okay, well, then you will be the equivalent of an hour and 10-minute golfer, and that's what you're going to get. I also heard a great saying from one of the guys that was in a huge, famous band. He said, look, I think the only people that don't succeed in this business are the people that quit. Because sooner or later, if you stick with it, people are going to know who you are and you're going to have your day in the sun. And uh, I I felt like that was really, really true. I mean, Manowar is certainly no overnight sensation, but we never planned to be. I've always admired bands like Led Zeppelin, the Rolling Stones, Aerosmith. I mean, you know, bands that are legendary bands, Black Sabbath, Uriah Heep, who are still playing, and many of those others I mentioned. And... With us, it was always, I don't want to make a million dollars and then quit. I don't want to have a hit song and then quit. It was always like, I love what I'm doing and I want to do it till the day I die. And I feel like those bands that I just mentioned have that same attitude. They just love what they're doing and they make people happy all over the world and they're spreading their music throughout the whole world. I was, um, I guess you would, the teachers would would say, uh, troublemaker, I think was, was the kind of term because... I just was in school believing that I should have fun. And I just couldn't understand why I was the only one that thought that way. There were a few scattered others, um, but it wasn't the teachers. And it, it wasn't you know the people who were great students. And I look back on it now and I say to myself, you know, yeah, I, I probably disrupted classes and I didn't study and I really didn't do my homework, but I can't take all the blame because I feel like some of the teachers that I had just really didn't motivate the class. And I feel like motivation is a big thing. And, and that's why I enjoy doing spoken word tours. That's why I enjoy um, being on stage and, and being able to let people know how we think, how we feel. And, you know, stop the show if I have to, if I feel like the security is being rough with the people. I, I want people to know that if you're motivated, that's a beginning. That That's just the beginning of the road. And if you can hang on to that motivation through everything you do in life, other people are going to pick up on that energy. But I just couldn't get that energy out of school. I just, I, I couldn't relate to it. My education is continuing. <laughs> I'm also enjoying the fact that I'm able to learn things every single day um, from places like YouTube or just anywhere on the internet. If I want to know something, I'm able to look it up instantly. And I'm so sick that it didn't exist when, when I was in school because it would have made school interesting for me and these subjects, because the subjects were, were interesting, but to get the knowledge was very uninteresting, you know, uh, having somebody just hand you a book and go read chapter 37 and then do a book report, you know, fuck that. Why was I, why would I do that when I could be out riding a motorcycle? <laughs> School is fantastic. If you have teachers that'll inspire people, I have nothing against education. It's, it's wonderful. There's not enough of it, but I, I think the teachers have a responsibility and, and the students have a responsibility. And when you get a great teacher and a great student, well... To me, it all goes back to um, your example and the music of Man of War and what Man of War stands for being so um, motivational and inspirational because you 
uh, didn't go to a university, you didn't study, you left school, started with many, many different short-term jobs, maybe not knowing how strong your calling was for the music, but you made your path and became very, very successful through the commitment that we talked about yeah, earlier. Yeah, I, I made it through school just because those teachers didn't want me there. So they were <laughs> happy to just kind of get me out of there, you know, like just sit in the back of the room, shut your mouth and I'll give you a passing grade. And I'm like, okay, that's a good deal. I'll take that. And yeah, I just barely made it, uh, you know, th to my high school graduation, but I did. And All the while, though, I was always playing music or it, I did study, you know, mechanics and I loved that. You know, I love engines. I love fast cars and you know, fast motorcycles and how an engine works mechanically speaking. And I, I, I find that um, very, very interesting. I'm mechanically inclined. And I think that's also why I'm so fascinated with engineering and guitars and pickups and sound and speakers and all of the things and the components that make up a race car or a recording studio or a guitar or an instrument or anything, anything technical is a mountain to climb, you know, and so, I just think it's so much fun. So did that uh, come into play over time or was that like that in the early days already that you didn't want to just play music? You really were interested in the technical aspects early on as well? I've always been interested in energy, what creates energy, you know what I mean? Like people, Look at Martin Luther King. When the guy talked, he didn't mumble, you know, and he didn't say, oh, you know, people, you know, he was like, wow, I had a dream. And anybody, you know, that you can look at that really inspired you, look at some of these actors that make, that make these movies. My God, they don't do any of the things in real life that they're acting, but they are able to put themselves in a place mentally and physically to absorb the character and the energy and the message and the motion of that person and shape it into something that at least takes the listener someplace or the viewer someplace and brings you to a different place. So, you know, I've always been kind of an energy freak. The excursion of a speaker, that's energy, you know, and the power amps, the way energy is conducted, you know, life itself, you know, the fact that we're here and that we're alive, that that's an amazing thing. Yeah, you have a very, very positive attitude towards life, even though a lot of negative things have happened to you over the years, but it's something that just doesn't deter you, does it? Well, my philosophy is I wake up each day and say, well, here we go. You know, get your seatbelt on. Some really great things are going to happen and some really fucking horrible things are going to happen. And I'm going to be thankful for the great ones and I'm not going to let the, the bad ones get me down. So when you started the podcast that you're going to continue, and now it's also the theme of the upcoming Spoken Word Tour, what inspired you to choose the name Words of Power? I have always looked for inspirational movies, inspirational people, people that could you know spark ideas in you, people that you could admire who do great things. Um, I'm blessed to have you know a great team of people around me. I'm inspired every day by by the great stuff that they do from building studios to designing equipment to going out on the road and touring and working here in the studio. And so every day I'm, I'm filled with inspiration and that gives you the energy or the power to get up every day and just again, enjoy the good and deal with the bad. And so I felt like, okay, words of power, maybe that'll give somebody some extra power to say, you know what, whatever is going to happen to me today or the rest of my life, I'm just going to get up and deal with it because there's really no choice. It's going to be there. So words of power, of course, the way you are using them is about motivating people, empowering people literally with examples out of your life or other examples that you can convey to them. But of course, words can also be powerful in a negative way. And I know that in your childhood, people were not always kind to you. Like you said, some of the teachers, I think they were pretty abusive sometimes. They would be in prison today if, if they, you know, if they slapped you around the way they did back then. It was pretty horrible experience being surrounded by negativity and rejection. And that's something that I learned to live with and I learned to deal with these words hurt you, they bother you, you can't understand it, you're fucked up, you can't figure out why does everybody think I'm a piece of shit? Why, whenever I tell somebody I want to, you know, play music and really enjoy, oh, you're never going to fucking make, you're never going to, you're never going to be able to support yourself, you're a fucking bomb, get it, get it. And it's like, I couldn't rationalize it for a while. 
So it was and, fuel for you, basically, to prove them wrong. Yeah, well, you know, I was trying to figure out. Well, okay, I come from you know, I come from upstate New York. Well, why, why, why shouldn't I feel like I have a chance? Until I realized they themselves were losers, and they had failed in their lives, and the only way they could feel good was to push somebody down lower than where they were. Like, you know, if you're standing up and somebody's laying on the floor, you certainly look taller and, you know, you might feel taller, but, you know, if you got to kick somebody down to get there, that doesn't make you a very good person. So I just kind of took a while to reason it out and say, well, look, whether any of that bullshit is true, whether I'm going to be successful or not, that's not for me to decide. I know I like what I do. I enjoy what I do. I'm having fun. And if it makes me happy and I'm having fun, I'm going to fucking do it. And sooner or later, maybe somebody else is going to like it. Knowing from you about your childhood and what we just discussed, I was wondering, could it be that man war consciously or subconsciously was your alter ego, like the powerful one that already had accomplished what you were working on accomplishing in life, where it's like, this is where I'll be. This is the power and the might that my life is destined to be. And I visualize it already uh, as a manifestation of where I'm heading. So do you think that played you know, into if it? You, if you listen to some of these old sayings, like treat others the way that you would want them to treat you, you know, if you think of things like that, you think of, well, what is, what is like the ideal way to be? And when, when you hear songs like Defender, you talk about somebody who's a hero and does good deeds, you know, like a fireman that runs into a building, saves a burning, you know, a, a person from burning to death and so forth. You, know, you think about all of this. Why do people do this? Why do they live that way? And that warrior is kind of a symbol that everybody's got the stuff inside them. That warrior represents what we all could be, should be. And that's why he, he doesn't have a face. It's, it's something for everybody to remind themselves every day that you're going to be able to survive. Bad things will happen, but you can beat it. If you look at all of the things that you would want somebody to be like, if you could think of, well, well that person is really a great person, well, well, then why aren't you a great person? The truth is, you are. You just have to think that way and be that way and resist the temptation to fall into the traps that we all have as humans. You know, we're all born with all these stupid weaknesses and it's up to us to, to kind of cleanse ourselves from being jealous or envious or, or whatever, you know, insecure and all, all these things that that shit has got to go. It does you no good. And I think on this spoken word tour, you are going to combine telling stories from your career, from man of war on stage, off stage experiences with this big, picture of how to make it through life and what all of us can learn from the path that you have walked, that the band has walked. You know, I, I don't know if I can tell anybody how to make it through life. I can tell people what I went through <laughs> <laughs> or some of what I went through. You know, it, it's been a long life here. I think I can just share uh, my story. And my story is based on me and the time that I started playing and my journey and where I am today. And I think that that story uh, has got a lot in it. And even if somebody says, well, yeah, but you were born in this year and in this generation, and I'm born in this year. And yes, there's a difference there, but I think the basic fundamentals are people are still people and music is still music or whatever your passion is in life. And being passionate and being committed, I think these are just facts and things that are part of the fabric of being a human. Those are the things that I feel most passionate about and enjoy sharing. 